<clears throat> Wait a minute, see if anybody else jumps on here. Whew. So anyway, I'm gonna start making a lot more videos and posts. We, uh, you know, we've started, um, Jennifer and I have started a, uh, trying to put our sermons online on Sunday. Um, I've got a YouTube page. So, uh, anyway, I'm, I'm absolutely just wanted to share for a minute. Don't jump off. If you get on here, stay on here. If you don't have time to watch it now, save it and watch it later. Um, not some great revelation, but it's a challenge. I actually, I have never liked running at all. Even when I was in the service, I hated running. I never enjoyed it. Um, a hundred years ago, I could run two miles and right at 13 and a half minutes and I hated every step. Why do I say that? Because I've decided that I'm gonna start making myself do things that I do not enjoy. Not to torture myself, but to stretch myself. So as a pastor of a church, you know, that, that goes with spiritual matters as well. You know, we get so lazy sometimes, and this isn't a video to beat people up or to beat you down. I'm talking to me more than anybody. I, uh, I went through the battle this morning. I told Jennifer last night, I'm getting up early in the morning and I'm going to make myself go run. And that alarm clock, that alarm clock went off and I lost the battle. I did not get up. Um, and it was when my wife and I both woke up two hours later and she said, I thought she was getting up to run and it shamed me. Um, not because of her, but because of me, because I'd made up my mind I was going to do something and I didn't get up and do it. So guess what? I got up and did it. Um, and not only that, not to punish myself, but this is the way my mind works. I haven't ran in months, and I posted on Facebook a few minutes ago, not a pat on my back because I did not run fast. I did not run the whole time. I walked probably almost as much as I ran, but I made it four miles with a 20 pound vest on, and I refused to stop. And that has to be our mentality in our Christian walk because we have to refuse to stop. Just because something doesn't go our way or it gets hard or a problem arises. You know, when David looked across the field and he saw the giant, David didn't tremble and think, oh my gosh, what am I going to do? He knew that he was already victorious. So what was so surprising to me is when I was running, the thing that I hate to do, man, the Lord speaks to me and I was actually... And it's going to be unpopular with a lot of people, probably, me being a pastor. As I was listening to uh, a motivational um, playlist, I don't even know what to call it. It was actually YouTube in my pocket, but I listened to motivational speeches. Some guys that don't claim to be Christians, some guys that have foul language and all that stuff. And I don't thrive on the foul language, but you know, we got to love people regardless if they smell bad or if they talk ugly or, or or whatever the case may be, we're called to be a city on a hill that can't be hid. So I'm running and I'm in Fort Oglethorpe, Georgia. We're staying with my daughter right now and um, beautiful battlefield park, lots of hills. And my big body don't like running up them hills, but man... I tell you what, I just kind of got in that groove and that zone to where I was sort of, I was, I was hearing the motivational speaking and, I, and I'll probably mention a couple things that I heard because it really you know, resonated with me inside. But also on a spiritual side of things, the word of God says to write the vision and make it plain. So I'm talking to my pastors. I'm talking to my men and women of God. Man, what's your vision? What are, you, what are you aiming for? What is your goal? Or are you just comfortable? Are you satisfied just going to service a couple times a week? And then when you hear somebody say, praise the Lord, and you say, oh, praise the Lord. And, and you've kind of checked your box of your, your spirituality and your holiness, you know. And again, I'm not trying to, you know, bust nobody's chops. Um, I'm talking to me more than anybody because I've been... You know, I've been given the responsibility of a congregation, and I want more. That's what this whole video is about, is I'm sitting here telling you 
that I want more. I want more from my life. I want more for the life of my congregation. I want more for the church, the body of Christ. I'm not concerned with competition between other churches. I've got so many, so many pastor friends that, you know, and I'm not going to name a bunch of names. I, I will name one name. I have a, a friend that I graduated high school with that his church is probably 15 or 20 minutes down the same road as where my church is at. And uh, Nick Rains, me and Nick have been friends for a long time. And he and I had lunch a few weeks ago. And the beauty of it is, is we're not competing with one another. And we don't have to. You know, as long as, I don't care if they go to Nick's church or my church or I can name off a hundred other churches. It does not matter to me if they're getting fed the word of God and learning to be who God created them to be. That's all I care about. So, my video today, and I will not be much longer, but you're going to see a lot more of my face. My video today is to encourage each and every one of you to take a step closer to who God created you to be. Set time aside. You know, don't say, all right, I'm going to read the Bible for five minutes. Okay, I checked that box. Meditate. I don't care if it's one line from one scripture. I've been talking to my, to my congregation about that, about about meditating on the Word of God, to keep that Word in front of your eyes. And it's so deep, it's so rich, what you can gain from just one scripture. I'm talking just sitting there and just really just chewing on that. How does that affect my life? What does that mean to me, you know? It's not just some antiquated book or some, you know, world's bestseller. It's not what the Bible is. It is the anointed, living Word of God. So take that and just really meditate on his word and how, how that applies to your life, how that affects you. You know, push yourself out of that comfort zone. That's what I did this morning is I come out here and I ran four miles. Man, and I did not go fast. I bet you, I know for a fact it took me more than an hour to run four miles and that is terrible. But you know what? I'm excited because I didn't stop and I refused to stop. I'm not going to be comfortable with anything. I'm not, we will never get to that place in our Christianity to say, all right, well, I've made it far enough. We have to keep pressing in because there's people all around us that need to hear the good news, that need to hear the gospel. You're just as much responsible for bringing the word of God as a pulpit minister, as an evangelist. You might not be called to pulpit ministry, but you are called to spread the gospel, the good news, to tell people of the love of Jesus and what he did for them. So I encourage you to do that. You know, I uh, I was I read a book just recently by David Goggins. You know, and he went through three hell weeks for Navy SEALs in one year, and you know, and I mean, just all these amazing things, ultra marathons. He was three hundred pounds, which I've been over three hundred pounds before in my life. So he's very rough and raw. But I'm gonna end this video with something that that David Goggins talked about. He said, "Man." He said, when I go up to go up to heaven and I'm standing in line waiting to be judged, he said, and, and I step up and, and the Lord looks at me and he says, David Goggins, he says, you know, 205 pounds, 60 ultra marathons, you know, Navy SEAL, Army Ranger, and names off all these accolades and and Goggins says, and I'm standing there and I'm looking at myself as a 300 pound exterminator. And I say, that ain't me. That ain't me you're talking about. And the Lord says, no, that's who you were supposed to be. Are you willing to press in and be who you were supposed to be? Because final word, ready? Is out of all the history of time and all the ages of time, God chose you for this very moment in time with a very special purpose, a purpose that you carry that nobody else carries. It makes you special, that you're special to him and he loves you with such a deep love. You know, I have five children and I promise you this, and I don't say this tongue in cheek, I don't say this to be ugly. I'm not giving my kids for anybody. You know, and we get callous to this, you know, but the word says that God, he loved us so much that he sent his only begotten son. And Jesus came down here not only to give his life for you and me, but also to teach us how to live kingdom living. 
So anyway, I love you guys, and I, I challenge you to, to press in. Lord, what can I do today? What does this scripture mean to me? Read Ephesians 1, 2, and 3. I'm telling you, those prayers that Paul prays in those three chapters is just for you. Illuminate the eyes of my understanding, Lord. Let me know what your word means. Show me your deep truths. So anyway, go out and be victorious because you're victorious because Jesus already won the victory. So we we'll love you guys. Be blessed.